Hello YouTube friends. I'm sitting here today with Agnes's hexagon quilt. I took the papers out a few weeks ago. I'll leave a link to that video at the end uh, in case you missed that one. But what I'm at this next stage now, the papers are all out. And if you remember, I left in all the papers around the edges to keep the integrity of the fabric around those loose edges there. But now I'm on the next stage and I've taken out those papers and I've put on the border fabric, but I've also laid out the quilt sandwich. So I want to talk to you about all those different choices and decisions that I made to get to this stage. Now, um, we'll start with the backing. So the backing for this um, quilt, um, I looked at extra wide backing and there are a few that were really quite nice, but the selection was limited. So in the end, I went for ordinary quilting weight cotton in the ordinary width and I decided to join it. And you can see, can't you, that the join is barely visible because of how busy the fabric that I've chosen is. It's this that's pinned behind me and Kat Rita on the board here because I bought quite a bit extra. I'm gonna use this for the binding, but I'm also gonna have quite a bit left over, which I'm really pleased about because I can use it in other ways. Uh, it's a beautiful fabric. It's K Facet's Millefiori. I think you can see when I fold it like that, just how well it looks with the finished quilt top. Now, I chose this particular colourway. This comes in lots of different colourways, and I actually have a few. I have this um, lovely pale colourway here, which I've used for a quilt backing before. I have this one. Now, this was a hot contender for a while. I only have a little bit of this. But this one, which is lovely and purpley, I really liked that one. That was almost what it, uh, uh, what I chose for it to be. Then I have this colourway, uh, just a, a, a layer cake square in this one, which is uh, a lovely rich dark blue. I have thought about that one. But in the end, I decided, I mean, it was always going to be the, this Millefiori. I really liked it a lot. But in the end, I decided I would go with this beautiful um, mid blue. I think it fits very well, I think, with the uh, with the quilt top. It's a fantastic fabric. Uh, I really, really like it. I'm going to have to do something more with this, I think, in the future. Now, the uh, can you look after those, please, Kat Rita? Thank you. <laughs> the next choice then was for what kind of border. And I thought about this for a long time. You can see that I've got this kind of teal color. Uh, that's uh, I cut a four inch border and it's going to finish at uh, three and a half um, by the time I've done all the seams and so on. Now what this is, uh, it's uh, it's this stuff. Now this is Moda Grunge. <laughs> I can't remember what colourway this is, but if you look at it a bit close up, you'll see that the grunge part of the fabric, uh, it's well named, isn't it? It's got those kind of grungy kind of um, patterns on it. And I had some of this left over from a quilt I made last year. I used this as the backing of that quilt and I really, really liked it. However, I didn't, I didn't love the grunge element coming up against the quilt top. So I turned it over and I used the teal plain back of the, uh, of the fabric. Very versatile. And I think I like the framing of this quilt with this grunge very much indeed. So it's always a good idea um, when you're trying to find a particular colour and you haven't quite got it, is turn your fabric over because sometimes it might be exactly the colour you need or the shade you need. It was in this case. There's a bit more for you to look after please Kat, Rita. So then the backing, I joined the backing, uh, the borders all set. Next, I needed to decide on what wadding to use, and I think there was never going to be any contest there. I always have a bolt of this stuff in the house. Uh, you should never be without wadding if you're a quilter. <laughs> and this is my favourite go-to cotton and bamboo blend. Now, this is the, um, the little ticket that comes inside it, so I'll tell you what, what this is composed of. Okay, so, and this says machine or hand quilt eight inches apart. Well, I'm gonna be quilting much, much closer together than that. 
but it's 50-50 bamboo and cotton and um, I like it very much. Like I say, I've always got this in the house uh, if I need, if I feel the urge to make a quick quilt. And uh, so I've laid this quilt sandwich out using this. It's, um, it, the things I like about it, apart from it's a nice natural fabric, it's got a really lovely drape because it's not terribly thin, but it's not thick either. It's that Goldilocks kind of wadding. <laughs> and I like it, I like it a lot. I like working with this. So that was the three decisions then the backing over my shoulder here, the wadding, this stuff, and then the border. And so I laid all of those out yesterday, in fact, on this table. And now I'm pinning it together with my curved quilting pins. Now I've done this before and it's not rocket science. I'm just pinning it actually really quite close together because I want the quilting of this one to be really accurate. So when it comes to the quilting then, all the time I've been making this quilt, I've been thinking, how am I gonna quilt it? Um, what kind of pattern am I going to use? Before I get onto the pattern, I'm gonna show you the cotton that I'm gonna use. Now, I, I was always going to quilt it in Aurafil 12. All the products that I mentioned, all the things that I mentioned, Please be aware that I'm not sponsored by anybody. No one at all sponsors me to do these videos. And so um, Aurafil 12 is my go-to for hand quilting. And I have quite a lot of different colours. And my plan originally had been to get all my blues and greens and maybe a few little purples and then just pick each one up as my, bob as my needle ran out. I would pick up a different bobbin. But I've kind of decided to use this. This is called Marrakesh and it's got every colour you could possibly imagine. And even the colours that aren't in this quilt, which are in this thread, will blend in, I think, absolutely beautifully because there's bits of yellows in here and reds here and there. So I've decided I'm going to use this Marrakesh thread. Uh, I have two full bobbins plus this one, and that means that I've got more than enough to do the whole quilt with Marrakesh. So, now we come on to the quilting. Usually when I hand quilt, I do what I've done. I make the quilt sandwich, I pin it all out. I get a few decent audio books on the go or a film or two. And then I sit here and I hand quilt on the table. Now, I think I've shown this before. I'll maybe leave uh, on the end card, I'll leave a link to some quilting videos where I do hand quilting. And I sit here and I hand quilt against the table. So my needle pushes down until it hits the table through all three layers, comes back up again, and that's the quilt stitch. Now, a, about a year ago when I was thinking about, because this has been on the go for a couple of years, when I was thinking about quilting this, I bought this. This is a massive embroidery hoop or a quilting hoop. And I had the idea that I might actually try and use this to do the quilting. I want the quilting on this to be fairly accurate. And although I also like the sort of um, the handmade, homemade look of a slightly irregular quilting, I'm giving myself a get out of jail free card here in case my quilting's rubbish. But I did think I would try this. I've never used a quilting hoop before. Uh, I, I use an embroidery hoop sometimes when I'm embroidering. And so I'm used to using a, a, a something like that, but I'm going to give this huge quilting hoop a try. It might be that I really love it and I do the whole thing with that, or it might be that I decide to return to my usual way of hand quilting. And so now that brings me on to the pattern, the design of the quilt stitches. And again, the whole time I've been making this quilt, I've been thinking about what backing to use, what wadding to use, always planning in my head what I might use. And there's, I've settled on two very different kind of quilting styles, uh, one of which I'll, I'll choose and use on this quilt. Now, over on Patreon, I do behind the scenes videos. And so I've just posted a video about this very quilt and the choices I've made. And it's a little bit more kind of, um, behind the scenes -y. and in it I ask my patrons which of the two patterns 
that I um, I'm thinking of. I've done a poll. And so patrons have voted on which of the two patterns they think um, which one I should use. Now, I get the casting vote, of course, but if there's a clear leader in that um, poll that I've put out on Patreon, uh, then um, I'll be very swayed by that. So when I say nobody sponsors these videos, uh, you know, like Aurifil or k Facet Fabrics or whatever, my patrons sponsor these videos. My patrons are the, the, the people who contribute to the running of this channel. I wouldn't be able to devote the amount of time I do to recording and making and editing videos uh, and doing all the things I do without that support. So I'm massively grateful to my patrons. Uh, thank you all very much indeed, all of you. And if you wanted to vote on the poll, but it's over there on Patreon anyway. Also there, I think very recently, I'll have just posted the diary, my roundup diary for May, and uh, which is all the bits and pieces. A lot of stuff in the garden on the May diary uh, so that people can see how things are growing. Um, the sunflower project's coming along particularly well. Um, but then I, I post that in the last week of the month, uh, every week for every month for patrons. So I'm going to crack on now and start the hand quilting of this, but I have to wait just a little while for the results of that poll to come in. Uh, I hope you, you're enjoying following along with this video. There's going to be quite a lot of videos about me hand quilting this. But before that, we've got some interesting things coming up on the channel. Uh, there's a project that I've been working on with my son, John, for two years. And um, it may be that you've already seen that video or it may be that it's coming out very, very soon because of the way that we schedule things around here. But that's been a project that's been, it, it, we came up with it right in the middle of the pandemic, which kind of put paid to quite a lot of it. Um, but we've picked it up again and we're running with it now. And you're going to see a number of videos that I've put together uh, with some, with my son, John, and with some very talented uh, friends of mine uh, that Anna and I have been uh, editing for you. And, and again, there'll be um, longer versions of those over on Patreon. So I am looking forward to sharing those with you. Uh, and probably another little secret project as well. We've got quite a lot in the pipeline, Anna and I. <laughs> uh, we work away um, making uh, those things happen and always thinking of new ideas and new things to do for the channel to keep it nice and interesting. And so today is Sunday and I was going to spend the day in the garden, but it's rainy and grey and overcast and windy. So the very best place to be is indoors with a bit of hand stitching. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to um, put something on to listen to and stitch. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy these videos as much as I enjoy making them. If you haven't subscribed, and my statistics tell me that over 30% of you haven't. So subscribe and click the notifications bell. Then you'll never miss when I post a new video and give us a like and a, and a, a, a thumbs up if you want to. Also the comments, there's quite a lot of interesting stuff comes out of the comments and one of the projects I'm doing at the moment has been heavily influenced by a lot of the, uh, the comments that came through. Uh, so thank you very, very much indeed for that as well. So do engage, it's really lovely. Down there on the lime green sofa, which is what I think of as my comment section, talk to each other as well. That's really nice. Oh, and speaking of the lime green sofa, you can settle down on, on the sofa over on Facebook because the lovely admins will welcome you there. And there's lots of really creative sharing going on over there. Just search for The Last Homely House. Anyway, that's my bit for today and I will see you next time. <laughs>